Zach, Nanchang, of course, the introductions are going to happen for sure. So maybe Fola, if he shows us that he's there, it's not just a computer that we're talking to, then we will start with Fola because he's the senior one of all of you. So, and Tabitha is here, Tabitha is also come in. So maybe if Fola, you just want to introduce yourself a little bit and then we we'll just do a little introduction that we go into the topic. Topic is business of mediation. And I will talk about the conference after you've done the, the uh, little introduction. Yeah, Fula, please. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening from wherever you're watching us. Uh, my name is Fola Lade. I'm an attorney mediator um, based in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, the principal partner of um, Forteva Partners is a bespoke commercial mediation law firm. And I'm also the um, founder of um, Forteva Mediation Academy. It's another bespoke um, um, academy where we empower people with the requisite skills of um, resolving disputes on their own. We don't make people mediators. We, it's more like an I care system where what we do is to give people knowledge to resolve disputes on their own. And I'm also a trainer and a facilitator and also an emotional intelligence specialist. I'm excited to be here. Thank you, Vikram. Thank you, Fola, for coming in. Tavita, you want to just... You want to, Tabitha? Yeah. yeah. Hi, yeah. good afternoon to you all. I'm uh, Tabitha van den Berg. I'm a professional mediator uh, from the Netherlands. So I'm near Amsterdam, a small but very cute village. And it's afternoon here. I think that's what we have to do. I was just thinking that in front of our names, we should write the, put the time and the temperature outside. Because uh, well, I think it's about <laughs> 70 degrees here. And, no, uh, tell us it's centigrade. centigrade. Tell, tell us it's centigrade. What is a centigrade? And following uh, Fola, I'm a partner in a, in a mediation firm that I bought. And I'm the first founder. I'm not the founding partner, but I'm the first partner uh, from four. Okay. No, I was in the first the temperature part of it. You were at 21 degrees. In the morning when we started the session, we were at 39 degrees. Okay, centigrade. And every the other two people were wearing warm clothes. One person from first Kenya, he was saying it was become really cold here. So I just thought that maybe we should not even talk about weather because you'd be rubbing salt in my wounds kind of situation. We're sitting at 21 degrees. When I started the session at 39 degrees, in the next one hour, we're already reached 41 degrees. So I think temperature and time we need to put down there to just appreciate our situations. So Loretta, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, Loretta. I think there is this noise uh, going on here. Let me just fix that. So someone okay. else should go. Let me try and fix that. Yeah, please. yeah. yeah. Nanchang is the only one who I can see. Isaac was not here. So Nanchang, you want to tell us about yourself? Well, <laughs> my name is Nanchang Nanguang. I am a lawyer. Um, unlike um, Mr. Vikram, just uh, pardon me. In Nigeria, we don't call people just like that. <laughs> we, 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 we attach something to at least to show respect. So I find it difficult to call you Vikram. So, but, um, call me Mediator Vikram, uh, Nanchang. You said Mediator Vikram, it just helps you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. There is someone you, who so. does that. There was someone from Kenya today. He also calls me Mediator Vikram. He does, I mean, it's like you, maybe he also just doesn't want to say Vikram. So I made life easier for you. You can just say Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. My name is Nanchang Nanguang. I am the principal partner of N. Nanchang & Co. <clears throat> it's a law firm based in Kaduna, Nigeria. I'm a dispute resolution specialist, an arbitrator, and a mediator. Although I, have, I had a, the previous session, you are saying no one goes into full mediation, including lawyers, where they just put in uh, subtitles. But uh, we, 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 we do that. So I, I, I am the founder of um, Settlement House. Is an ADR organization that is into uh, training, sensitization, uh, um, uh, anything that has to do with ADR. So we promote ADR, we do seminars, trainings, all that is available. So, and um, it is based also in Kaduna, Nigeria. I think basically that is um, what I have to say about myself. Yes. Perfect. So, Isaac. Yes. Hello, everyone. It's actually afternoon here. 
is 235 here in Ghana. It's, it's like, uh, it's a sunny afternoon, yes. The weather is so hot, 30 degrees. Um, my name again is Isaac Asare. I'm the program director for Institute of Agriculture Internship Studies and also the administrator for Ghana National Association of ADR Practitioners. So basically that is... Okay, and although interesting work that you're doing, we could we can talk about it as we go along. I'm sure you're doing, you're doing interesting work. Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, so, but what I have sure. to do is... For so maybe in the, in the course of the program, I have to... It's 14.36 uh, p.m. Okay, perfect. You, you can just say so bye to us. Don't, yeah, program, don't, don't just disappear. Don't just yes. disappear. Say bye to us before you leave. Okay, but of course, the discussion hasn't started. Yes, We're yes, already yes, thinking so. about leaving, Isaac. You don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So let me... I have to be teaching in a few in a few minutes from now. Okay. Yes. Okay, no problem. It, quickly, I have to I have to talk about this. Uh, the conference, World Mediators Conference, 18 May to 30th June, Mediation Vision 2026, Evolution of Mediators and Mediation. Started on 18 May with the inaugural address by Ken Cloak. Please watch it on YouTube. Why I'm doing this, Fola, is because Tabitha was in a session on with me on neurodiversity and mediation. There was uh, Martha there, and she said you should talk about what are we sitting here for? So if that's why I need to also tell you people because I'm a little too abrupt and I just start wherever. So this is the reason. So business of mediation, Fola, it has to start with you. Our lawyer who is actually a businessman. What would you say? Okay, so um, how many minutes do I have to speak so that I can mentally program myself? Because I have a on. slight presentation. Take it as long as you want. Or should we just let Isaac if you, Isaac wants to leave, should we tell him to just whatever he wants to say? Isaac, how much time do you have? Isaac? Okay, he's disappeared. Okay, Fola, please. It's your, your show. Okay, take, then. Take it, take it the way you want. Okay, thank you so much. So um, I will be um, um, sharing my slide. So one second. So can you, can, you, can, you, can, you, can you see the screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. One second. Let me just move this we'll have to just start the slideshow yes yeah. okay yes uh, okay i'll do that so <clears throat> today i'm going to be speaking on the business of mediation and um, i don't intend to take too long because this is supposed to be a day or, or a day or two topics so i'm just going to touch on salient points and then just move on now it's really very important that people understand uh, mediators know that there is a knowledge of mediation and there is a business of mediation. Now, and before I go into that, it's also very important the uh, mediators ask themselves this question, what is your why? Because you see, a lot of times people go into things and they don't have an idea of why they do what they do. So you're going into mediation. Why are you going into mediation? Are you going into mediation because you see mediation as a business? Are you going into mediation because you see mediation as a vocation? Are you going into mediation because you see mediation as a retirement plan? How do you really see mediation? Because you see, the mindset that the, the mindset ascribed to the way you see mediation invariably determines your trajectory in the business and practice of mediation. Now, for, from the way I speak, Vikram, we, everyone knows that I'm all about the business of mediation. I, 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 it, it's always what I preach. I, I'm all about the business of mediation. But I cannot talk about the business of mediation first without even having the knowledge of mediation. So I'm going to use myself as an example. In knowing my why, <clears throat> since I accidentally stumbled upon mediation, I'd always wanted to focus on the commercial aspect of mediation. But you see, there's something that is called the 10 10 80 rule. And it's something I, I, I came up with not too long ago because as much as I may be all about the business of mediation, the knowledge of mediation is also very important. So the first 10% talks about the knowledge of mediation. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to be like um, a fancy restaurant that has all the beauty and all of that. And when you now, when you now get into the restaurant and order a meal, you find out that the meal is nothing to write home about. So the knowledge of, of, of mediation is very, very important. That's where the first 10% comes into play. The second 10% talks about the application of mediation. And it's also very important to state at this point that mediation is a verb. It's, 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 it's a doing word. So which is why <clears throat> where, where you get the knowledge from is very important. But the application is also as important as the knowledge. 
because you see mediation is not um is not something it, I, I don't want to call it an academic exercise because you are dealing with human beings and for as long as you're dealing with human beings one plus one is not two because when people come into a mediation session, they come in with all, with baggages, they come in <clears throat> with different values and all of that. So until you have been able to practice and practice to understand the dynamics of mediation and come up with your style, you may not be an excellent mediator. But then, all of this is also 10%. Now, within the framework of the business, the 80% is really where all the work is. Now, in most, in most countries, countries, especially here in Africa, Mediation is just evolving. So you, 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 you have the burden of, of trying to explain mediation to a lot of people. People, are de by de people by default are resistant to change. So when you're telling someone that rather than having to go to court, you can actually have a way of, uh, of having their dispute resolved amicably. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's no mean fit. Because you have to first of all contend with the lawyers, you have to contend with the clients. Apart from that, again, we're talking about about business we're talking about networking we're talking about branding we're talking about having a structure we're talking about a lot of things and and, and Vikram, <clears throat> the business of mediation is not any different from the business of anything at all the only thing what you just tend to do is that you just take some of the elements of of going into business and then infuse it into mediation so your why is very 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 important <clears throat> excuse me another thing i would also be talking about again is this mediation as a concept mediation as a skill mediation as a profession mediation as a vocation mediation as anything does not stand in isolation now i'm going to take you take you back to the definition of mediation we have so many definitions of mediation some have defined mediation as an amicable resolution of dispute some have with, have defined mediation as a scenario where a facilitator facilitates an amicable resolution of a dispute but the general theme that runs through every definition of mediation is the word dispute. So which means that mediation, if you're, going to, if you're, if you're looking at mediation, what, I, what part of mediation are you looking at? And that's why I always admonish people who want to come into mediation that aside from getting the general knowledge of the concept of mediation, they should also have a specialist knowledge of it. So what area of mediation are you thinking of specializing in? So uh, now, and, and, and in the 21st century now, Vikram, specialization is the new name of the game. You know, you, the era of being a master of all, jack of all, is becoming obsolete. So if you're coming into mediation, what area of mediation are you planning on, on coming into? And more often than not, people who come into mediation probably have something they are doing, or probably have an area of interest, they have an area of specialization. So most times I always advise them that within the framework of the areas of interest or specialization they have, they should try and see how they can go into that industry and look for ways of resolving disputes. Is it property dispute? Is it debt recovery? Is it construction? Is it medical negligence? Is it accident and thought? Is it banking? <coughs> Name it. Interestingly enough, more than 80% of the cases being resolved through arbitration, litigation, can also be resolved through mediation. And some of the benefits of it, apart from having a sustained business relationship, is also being able to even keep the relationship and even make more money. So you, so, so we cannot talk about the business of mediation without talking about specialization. And we can't talk about specialization without talking about being an authority. So when we talk about being an authority, I like to use myself as an example. I, I focus mostly on commercial mediation. I do mostly commercial mediation. And that is what the framework of my law firm is all about. I don't do so much. I don't do, I don't do, I don't do a lot of family, family issues. I do mostly commercial, tort, negative, tort, anything that falls within the framework of civil, of, 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 of civil procedures. Those are the things I handle within my framework of, 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 of having a law firm. Even, even in the area of teaching, I'm, I'm, I'm conscious of the fact that I don't teach people to become mediators because you see, we have so many organizations teaching people to become mediators, but how many of them actually teach them how to make money from mediation? So that's why I, I've tried to carve a niche for myself that look, rather than focus on teaching people to become mediators, why don't I teach people to get value from becoming mediators? So you can see how in following that trajectory, I've been able to carve a niche for myself and become an authority in that subject matter. 
Now, the business of which now this now brings us into the crux of today's topic, which is the business of mediation. Sometimes like I like to call it the umbrella of mediation. Now, there are so many things you can do on that mediation. And I came up with this, um, 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 I coined this, I got this from metrics, I called it the MAT trilogy. Now, we're under the umbrella of mediation, you can become a lot of things. But I'm going to focus on three things. Number one, you can become a mediator. Now, when you decide to become a mediator, there's also a revenue stream that comes from becoming a mediator. When you could become a, you, you can either be affiliated to um, ADL organizations and get paid for being a mediator with them. You can either also go into private mediation and also resolve disputes between clients. And for the benefit of those watching who don't know who a mediator is, a mediator is a facilitator or a neutral that resolves disputes between two parties. So within the framework of being a mediator vis-a-vis -vis generating a revenue stream, you can actually do that by being by working in an ADR with an organization or being or, or, or working in a private or, or having private mediations. The second revenue stream under under the umbrella of mediation is becoming a mediation advocate. A mediation advocate is a lawyer or a professional that represents his clients at mediation. The same way we have lawyers who represent their clients in court. It's also how we have um, um, professionals that represent their clients at mediation. Now, because of so, but there's a skill set that is ascribed to you being a, um, a mediation advocate. Because you see, when it comes to representing your client, find you're representing your client, but you, you, but you are amenable to an amicable resolution, as opposed to um, um, litigation where you, you stick to a point till the court gives a judgment. So, and, and because most, more often than not, most of the clients that will come to meet you would always come to meet you to tell you they want to litigate. If you're a mediation advocate, you can actually encourage them to have ways of resolving disputes on their own. And for, because of the benefit of time, I'm just going to take them in bits and pieces. The third revenue stream under the umbrella of mediation is being a trainer or a facilitator, which is what we're doing right now. You see, the, 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 the gold mine in dissemination of knowledge cannot be, cannot, uh, cannot be underestimated. Because you see, um, um, people are thirsty for knowledge. Now, the concept of mediation in some climes are just coming up. So, so, so people are desirous of knowing what mediation is all about. So this in itself is a revenue stream. I also belong to some organizations where I get to train them on, on, on mediation, get to train them on, 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 on amicable ways of resolving disputes. And sometimes with the end users, the clients, some of them don't even know what mediation is, but they, under, they have an idea of what workplace conflict is. They have an idea of what workplace dispute is, which is almost like a, another flavor of mediation. So, the, so within the framework of the match trilogy, if you want to set up a business in mediation, you can actually be, you can be a mediator, you can be an advo a mediation advocate, you can be a trainer, or guess what, um, um, Vikram, you can be all you can be all three. You can be all three because you see, I I I I tell people who want to go into the business of mediation that the first thing you should say to yourself is this: don't leave money on the table. Strategically position yourself for where the windfall will come from. Because the mindset ascribed to being a mediator is that you have to be neutral. The mindset to being a mediation advocate is not necessarily about being neutral, but taking a particular position in, resp in representing your client, but with the idea of being open to an amicable resolution of disputes. But you see, everything has its own skill sets. And <clears throat> we cannot also talk about... The, the, the business and practice of mediation without talking about this new normal now. Um, Vikram, remember how I met you? I met you online. I think um, I sent you a LinkedIn invite. And I must tell everyone today that Vikram is the reason why I'm actually able to do a lot of synergy series. Because I remember I reached out to Vikram. Vikram was my first guest, was my first international guest on my session. Because I just reached out to Vikram and he was so supportive, he was so nice. And just like Nan Chang, um, I struggled with calling Vikram his by first name, but he made it so he's like, Falado, you can call me, you can call me Vikram. And uh, so the, the point I'm trying to bring out of all of this is that technology has brought Vikram and I together. Technology is also bringing myself and Isaac together and also bringing myself and Tabitha, if Tabitha is still here. So what am I trying to say now is that 
this is the new normal now the new normal of actually being able to be in a particular be, be, be in a particular place and project yourself all around the world dear listeners there is something that is called the universality and the globalization of mediation unlike unlike litigation or like if i'm going to have to go to um, india to become a lawyer i need to go to the law school in india if i have to go to the uk or ghana to become a lawyer I need to go to, but <clears throat> once you have been trained to become a mediator the skill you get can be used anywhere now if the, invariably what this means is that if 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 i'm being called to come and mediate a case in ghana i can go and mediate a case in ghana if vikram wants me to be a co-mediator with him in any case anywhere around the world i can do that without even having to leave nigeria and one thing the pandemic has done is that it has made the world a smaller place because right now you are able to project yourself to it and this is one of the benefits of actually being online and this would also greatly help the concept of mediation now after all said and done i've said a lot of things and this is where most mediators struggle with because they are always at what is called the idealization stage they have so many ideas about the business of mediation but ideas are good but ideas are worth nothing if they are not implemented because implementation is the key you know it's 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 okay for me to come and explain to you and tell you about the benefits of mediation and explain and you and you are able to key into some of the things i have said but if you don't implement you're not any better off than the person that just listened to it you're not better off than someone who bought a book and the, oh, 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 no you're not better off than somebody who bought a book and did not read and, and the person who did not buy a book at all so implementation is the name of the game now when you now implement you also have to be consistent because you see at the end of the day what most people need is not consistency what they need is no most people need consistency more than they think they need intensity so <clears throat> in rounding up i'll just try and, and 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 share the vision of what i see as far as the business and practice of mediation is all about and why i think no why i know mediation is the future of dispute resolution you see you notice change when change you notice anything when it becomes late the only way you know when a woman a woman doesn't know when she's pregnant she only knows when she's pregnant when she starts to see the signs if conflict is as old as mankind you know it, uh, 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 for my christian brothers and sisters out um, um, listening to me now we know the first conflict that happened between um, god and eve when uh when, when she ate the apple that, that was the first conflict and several conflicts that happened it, there is no society today that we have that did not start off on the bedrock of conflict and if they and if you look at the general theme that goes between conflict dispute is the word disagreement and if we decide to go back in time do you know what has been happening to conflict vikram conflict has been evolving 40 50 years ago it was fashionable for for um, um no 100 years ago it was fashionable for people to pick up um, um 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 swords and pick up shields and go to war but when the commercial but when business when 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 they introduced money which was an offshoot of trade by butter disputes abound disputes came up and they now had to think of ingenious ways of resolving disputes now we are in an era where people can see that conflict is part of mankind we are born with conflict because you see you have two kids coming out of their mother they are not taught to have disagreements but you see them fighting so you ask yourself one question where did they get that idea of fighting from so you see i think it's really very important people begin to see the idea of conflict in another perspective people need to start embracing conflict because you see when you see conflict for what it truly is you are able to harvest the benefits of conflict and what am i trying to bring out of all of this within the framework of mediation when you are able to have a dispute resolved amicably there is a possibility of continuity of relationship apart from the continuity of relationship there is value because you see <clears throat> there's something that people don't talk about enough that is the concept of time the time you're going to spend in court the time you're going to spend um, um time you're going to spend um, um arguing and all of that do you know if parties actually come down to settle you can have a session with you can have a mediation resolved in in in, in not too many in, in, in not too long an hour 
So no, no, no. I, I'll take that back. You can have a mediation resolved very quickly. So this, so the conversation is changing. One thing that happened with the pandemic is that people were able to see that businesses can genuinely go wrong without the fault of anybody. The people have been able to see that, okay, fine, that when businesses actually go wrong, did it go wrong because one party was being negligent? No. Did it go wrong because one party was trying to be fraudulent? No. So you see, uh, people are now beginning to see that, look, w- w- with the idea of mediation, we can actually make things go faster. And on a higher level, on a higher level, mediation is also being used to bring about world peace. So if so, I, I tell everyone that cares to listen that if you that that mediation will not only bring about resolution of disputes, but on a deeper level, it will bring about world peace. Thank you very much, Vikram. I think Thank I'm you, Fola. Love your passion and of course what you're doing because Loretta will of course tell us more about that, about what you are doing. Like I told you last session, she'll tell me more. But I think Loretta. This time, maybe we'll keep a little brief because I know Paul is doing wonderful work and you've learned a lot from him. So, Loretta, please, if you can tell us about how you've picked up from what Fola has told you and you setting up your own practice, all the, those aspects. Yes, he has said everything. I won't even lie. So, right now, I don't even have anything to say, but I'm just going to talk about the... Uh, uh, business of mediation, how he impacted our lives. Nang Chang is also here. I remember he's a member of um, our mentorship academy. So it's another um, evidence to show that for Mr. Fola, I beg your pardon, is doing um, a great job raising the young ones, the younger ones, um, impacting knowledge into everyone around him. So uh, I started my practice um, last year after going to my trainings. I, I had my trainings in 2019, but I didn't really practice anything until I came across Mr. Fuller's, um page on Instagram. So he was able to um, train me again. You know, there is a difference between getting a certification and having like proper training where you get the physical or practical experience, let me so to say. So um, we went through this series and series of trainings that are still available online. Interestingly, you know, he trained us, he showed us um, the business of mediation and let me just make one confession. I started deviating at some point. You know, I was distracted for a minute because like, you know, um, if you are not really serious with mediation, you may never earn money. He noticed it and he had to call me to order. So it's very important to have people like mentors who can also call your attention back when you are not doing the right thing. In um, the business of mediation, he already figured out that I was not doing the right thing because I have been trained to be a mediator. I'm a mediation advocate. I can also train people. Why am I not making money? He figured there was a problem somewhere. So he had to fix it somehow. And when he he said those things, I had to go back to the drawing board, you know, bring out um, the issues where they were. I resolved some of them. I'm still working on it. You know, so if you have people who are constantly telling you um, the way to go about it, I remember Tabitha mentioned in the first um, training where she said, uh, if you are not working to earn money, you should go work in a grocery store. You know, you shouldn't be a mediator. And then uh, Mr. Vikram also mentioned that um, mediators should be compensated, should be paid very well. So uh, especially those that are practicing mediation as their source of livelihood you know as a full career path they should be paid very well so they can um, not just put in their passion but you know um, earn money from where they are working from so i understand what mr fola just said about um, even though he's always stressing i'm all about the money no he's not just about the money he's about the impact because if at the end of the day, the mentees are able to stand on their own, we won't be disturbing him. He can actually delegate uh, certain things to us to help him do it. 
So somehow he's training us on one hand and also helping his business grow on the other hand. So I appreciate all of that. And the platform where we have here, like he said, the new normal, the pandemic made uh, ODR very popular and also um, Zoom, so to say. We are right now online. You are in India, we are in Nigeria, Tabita is in the Netherlands, um, Isaac is in Ghana. But we are able to have this meeting at no cost at all because imagine if we planned this for like a month and every other person will book a flight to India where we see it. We'll, we'll spend money paying for hotels um, and flights, you know, everything, logistics, basically. So, but with the help of uh, online dispute resolution, we are able to do so many of these things. And you know, the pandemic helped a lot of mediators earn good money. In the past, it used to be free, but the courts were closed. So the only um, solution now was to use the ODR, online dispute resolution, to resolve this dispute because conflict is something that will always be there, just like Mr. Fola said. As long as human beings coexist, there will always be conflict. And if they are not resolved, we will not have a peaceful environment where people can coexist. You know, our mental health is very important to us. Um, it may not be possible to have um, a peaceful environment all the time, but the ability to regulate some of these things will help a long way, you know. So I think basically Mr. Fola has said everything, but these are just my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Loretta. I know you learned a lot from Fola, but we'll take that. We'll obviously, we'll get back to that. Let's just Nanchang come in. I don't know, but Nanchang, let me just check if Isaac is there because he wanted to go. He had some class that he had to take. Isaac, are you there or not there? Okay, he's gone. He's teaching somewhere. Yes, Nanchang, please. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I will first of all um, thank Mr. Fola. You know, Loretta has said it all. Uh, you know, I, I was very happy and excited to come across Fola. He first came to our law week and then uh, he talked about mediation. And, uh, you know, the unfortunate thing about this uh, mediation um, thing is I was trained uh, as far back as 2014, and then I've not been doing anything formal with whatsoever I've learned or acquired, just as Loretta said, you have this certification, but what are you doing with it? You do nothing with it because the environment you find yourself, you have, you have to be determined. You have to actually know, just as Fala said, your why. Why do you get these things? Not just to get the certification and just move ahead. So you need to know what you actually intend to use the certificate for. So uh, he came and spoke about it. Meanwhile, in Kaduna, as a then, there was no uh, activities that relates to mediation, ADR, things are just quiet. While I was just picking up and trying to do something, Fola just came in as God sent to come and pour up uh, whatsoever I have in my mind. So we got talking and then I've listened to a lot of trainings from him, you know, it's, it's online just as uh, Loretta will say. And then, you know, <clears throat> I've attended some of the sessions. This session he's talking about um, the business of mediation. I've also uh, uh, been trained in this aspect. We know that there are a lot of organizations in, in Nigeria who train and certify people as mediators, but Nobody concentrates on training people on how to earn money. So that's why a lot of people, including lawyers that we're talking about that they are not interested, uh, they just feel that if I get trained, I get the certification, what else? The organization that trains you, it will take years and years before they can get across to you and appoint you as a mediator to say, oh, mediate between this, this. So what else, how do you do? What do you do? How do you go about earning money? So when I attended this training, in fact, Fala was, uh, I, I, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it, but he was down to earth. He opened up everything, everything, everything about his secret. So I will tell him that even though he is saying 
no to uh, pro bono or free services, but some of the information he, he actually gave us were pro bono or free because you can't pay to get that. He told you, he would tell you about how he wakes up, you have to wake up early. Is that part of the training? No, it's a free information that you didn't pay for. Wake up early so that you can have a long day, plan your schedule, go for exercise. You have to be fit and proper, you know, take care of yourself and your health to be able to do these things. These are not something you pay for. So I would tell Mr. Fola that even though he's emphasizing, no, you have to pay, it's business, business, but still, he has offered, he poured out his mind, the secrets on how he goes about, how he succeeds. He just opened up. I was just wondering, I said, ah, Fola, which kind of, you don't have trade secrets. You just pour out everything. And I think that is the aspect that impacts us a lot. Immediately after the training, I know that I've organized uh, a, a training session in Nigeria, five days training session on, uh, on dispute resolution. I've done a lot of seminars because it actually spore up everything. But another aspect uh, when it comes to this business of mediation is that for some of us who are starting an ADR organization, we already have the big organizations on ground. So when you even think about it, you just get swallowed up you, you you just feel ah there is nothing i can do just small me and then maybe when you begin to make wave you will still begin to have some resistance maybe some issues with some of the big uh, organizations on ground but from what we have, we have have learned from what i've learned from this business of mediation you need to actually understand why you are going into this thing and then if you are coming up of course nobody knows you as a mediator so that's where I advocate to, uh, uh, the place of trying to do free and pro bono services. You make yourself known. Of course, as people are getting to know you, people will begin to get your contact. People will begin to call you. People will begin to say, oh, even though they cannot pay, you can go and talk to an audience. And that audience, eventually, one or two person may actually do something. I remember when for last started, I said his first training, he spent some dollars making advertisement emails and all of those things, but nothing came out. It was through his WhatsApp, you know, some of those things that some people started coming in to say, oh, they want to be trained and they, they register. So those aspects of the money he spent and all of those things were just uh, a way of making known. At least tomorrow when somebody sees his name, say, oh, this person has, has sent an invite before about mediation, maybe that is what he does. So the free services rendered I feel just as he balanced it later on, uh, it, it may not be money, it may not be cash. You may not get cash as an exchange. It's a trade by butter. As you tell people about this thing, as they get aware, uh, they, they, they get the knowledge, they know that they can explore ADR or mediation as an option. The more they begin to uh, uh, see that, oh, I have a dispute instead of going to the court, or instead of, in fact, they can meet their lawyer and say, please, can you explore any means of resolving this thing as quick as possible? People yet have to know. People need to know that, yes, there is option. But we stay, even among lawyers, I'm telling you, Mr. Vikram, that a lot of lawyers don't even know about mediation here in Nigeria. So how do you expect them to even advise their clients to go for mediation? And especially where lawyers feel that mediation is coming to take away food from their table. So you, you see that if you are going to be a mediator and you do not understand the reason why you are coming into the mediation space as per the business of mediation, you know, you are, you are going to be stagnant. You will just be there. You feel you have wasted your, your time, your money, your resources acquiring certifications. And yet, this thing is not bringing income for you. So, but when you understand that this is where you are going to, you, you have to strategize, get the, the certifications and then begin to talk to people about mediation. Talk to people, you start with your family, start with your friends, start from your place of worship, start from the place you work, you know, let them know that you are actually an ADR person and you can help them resolve their disputes. You must make the sacrifice. You must pay the price of actually offering those services for free. Because when you are talking with someone who does not know about mediation and you're saying, come and pay for it, he will be unwilling. But by the time you educate him about it, and then he has something small, he calls you, you advise him, you direct him, and he sees results. Tomorrow, when he wants to do something serious and he needs 
and a dispute arise, he will contact you. So we're talking about business of mediation and we have different aspects. You can be a mediator, that's one of it. And then you can be a mediation advocate. Like in Kaduna now in Nigeria, I think I do, we don't have any mediation advocate per se. We do not have. So why won't people begin to look at areas where there are a scarcity of personnel or, or, or mediation advocate and say, oh, let me get trained to become a mediation advocate. Let me place myself strategically so that when opportunity come, they are looking for a mediation advocate in, in Kaduna in Nigeria, they will, I will be the first point of call. You have to actually plan, prepare, and strategically place yourself in order to be able to get the, 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 the returns you are looking for. So we don't have those. People don't even know about mediation advocacy. They don't know about it. They just know that you can be a mediator, you can be an arbitrator. What about mediation advocate? Nothing like that. So when you become a mediation advocate, and then you are the only person or you are just few, you know, that's an opportunity for you. That's a business. Once it begins to happen, and then if you become a mediation advocate, you need to actually let people know your role. You are like a lawyer representing a client in the court. You represent people in mediation sessions. And then if they have disputes, instead of getting a lawyer who is already uh, trained in the uh, legal aspects of arguments and you know some of those court things instead of that they'll say oh can we get a mediation advocate you know that you have carved a niche for yourself in that particular area so but another important aspect also is that it has to do with the talking is the training and facilitation aspect you know the more you talk about something the more you get understanding the more you get mastery over it you, you you master you master that particular thing so those knowledge and skills that you have acquired if you make effort of transferring it to another person and that's what i think Fola has done very well he does not reserve anything if he acquires a new knowledge today tomorrow he will be able to share it everywhere for people to participate and to, to partake in and as he shares it those knowledge, he retains them the more, he becomes more experienced in it. And then you, know, you get to a point where you don't look at the books, you don't look at the slides, you don't look at anything. You can talk about this thing anywhere, everywhere. And when somebody say, say, oh, can you tell me something about mediation? Why should I go for it? You know, you'll be able to talk. You know, you live, Fola lives among lawyers. He has a mediation practice and that is what she does exclusively. When you meet lawyers, they will be like, ah, are you mad? Are you crazy? Why would you say you are doing mediation? I think maybe you are going to be dying with, or, of hunger or something like that. You know, I think that was his experience. But now I believe that some of them must have been coveting what he is doing. You know, so because that is because he knows what he was pursuing. He knows his why, and then he was pursuing it. Now, if you acquire the knowledge and you become certified as a mediator and a mediation advocate, but nobody gets to know that these are the services you render, that, that, that wouldn't add value to you. But when people begin to see you training others, doing seminars, doing training, facilitating here and there, and they get to know that, oh, ah, this person, every time you see him, is mediation, is ADR, is this and that. You know, you have created a brand or an identity for yourself. So with that, anybody wants to do something, I, I, I believe that when you go to Lagos now, you mentioned mediation. For last mind and for last uh, name will be the, in fact, if not the first point, maybe after first or second or third, you will see his name there because he has been able to successfully through training, through advocacy, through, through talking about this thing, he has he has, he has created the needed awareness for people to know that this is what he does. So that, that is the place of trying to help people know what you do so that when they have needs in those areas, they can actually reach out to you. But when you don't do it, you have acquired the certification and you kept it in your office as uh, decorations. Nobody knows what you are doing. So we can start, uh, uh, I think one of the aspects also is we should start make, uh, leveraging on our, our close associates, our friends and our families. 
We have a lot of contacts in our phones. We have a lot of friends around us. We have a lot of extended families who do not even know what you do as a person. So if you say you are a mediator and you want to make money from it, first of all, make money from people you uh, that are close to you. Because with this idea of scam, of internet fraud, when you are sending a message to someone, ah, okay, we do this training, we do this, we do this. People in Nigeria will feel that this is a scam. That is natural. So, but when someone who has your contact receives a message like that and he knows where it is coming from, and he can verify, he can call you, say, are you sure this thing is from you? Say, yes. You know, the person can easily turn in. He can actually say, oh, let me give a trial. But if it is somebody who does not know you at all, before you can start gain people outside, start with the people within you. So get to talk to them about it. Let them know that this is what you stand for. This is what you represent. This is the business you do. You can talk to people about this thing. You can resolve this with for them, even if it means doing it sometimes for free because some people feel that they want to see the result. They want to see whether this thing works or not before they can actually uh, um, uh, come into it and also tell people about it. So if you are successful with one, that same person is going to take the news to another person that, oh, instead of wasting time in court, I know somebody who can help you resolve your dispute within the shortest time possible. And you know, the good thing about it is that you have an opportunity to interact. You have to agree, you know, whatsoever you are agreeing will be for both party A, party B will make contributions. You know, it's something you discuss, not tense, no tension, nothing. You and you you, you prefer solution for yourself. You know, when 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 that happens, somebody comes in and he says, Wow, so you mean I, I don't need to go and stay before a judge who will uh, I will be afraid of expressing my mind. The lawyer has to be talking. You mean I can talk for myself, I can explain my grievance. That's a very wonderful thing. But a lot of people need to be given the opportunity to see that this thing actually works before they can actually imbibe it. So I think uh, that's the uh, little thing I can say about uh, the, the business of... Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think little that you use there, maybe that one might not be the correct thing. <laughs> that's a lot and very good. <laughs> I think what you said, that your, your passion also... Either Fola has put that thing in you, wherever it's come from, it's wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. The only... I was going to say that. I was going to say that. When you hear Mr. Fola's mentee speak, you just know that everything is for me. Like, it's something we get used to. Listening to him makes those things just stick somewhere around the head, the brain. So anytime mm -hmm. we talk, he's like, oh, Mr. Fola is here again. So he's as good as... We are only using him as a case study for today because if you want to talk about the business of mediation, look for Mr. Fola Lade anywhere in the world. If you want to know anything about the business of mediation, you can find everything you need to know from me. Thank you. And imagine that Fola has put his hand up. He doesn't need to really speak. <laughs> this is... no, no, I just I, I need to just um, put something in proper perspective about the concept of free. So there's a difference between impacting knowledge and rendering a service. There are two different things. So you see, now, when you are impacting, now, when people come to meet me, now, one thing I think I have a knack for is seeing passion and desire and knowing that, um, that, knowing that what this person needs is just a sense of direction. Now, I know what I had to go through uh, before I found my way. I had to, you know, a lot of trial and error, you know, mistakes I've had to make and all of that. And I promised myself that I was not going to allow anyone make the same set of mistakes I made. So let's just say I used myself as an experimental guinea pig. So I'll use um, Nan Chang and uh, Loretta as an example. You know, when they approached me at different times, um, Nan Chang in, 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 in Cardinal, I saw that, I saw that hunger. I saw that drive and I know the only thing these guys needed was just a sense of direction. So you see, I dare say I'm, I'm humble that um, they see me in this light, but at the end of the day, um, Vikram, it's all on them. You know, it's, it's like putting, uh, uh, they were already on that hill. All I just did was just to give that hill, just give them a push. So you see, it's a different ball game when you come to meet me, to tell me to, tell me to impact knowledge and I give you a trajectory. 
But when you now need my service to solve your own problem, which usually comes out of disputes most times, that is when the daggers are drawn. So, and because mediation is just coming up, we need see, and I tell people one thing, that is, the sky is wide to take everybody. You know, so why that? If Vikram, if you give twins, if you give a set of twins the same article of clothing to put on, they would both look different. So what that invariably means is that even if I give my all to everyone, at the end of the day, I'm still the secret sauce. I'm still the secret in- ingredient that makes the, the soup taste differently from each other. So it's really very important people also understand the concept of free. Free is good, but you see, free destroys value. A, a free, apart from the fact that free, you should also ask yourself one question. This free item I'm giving, this free delivery I'm giving, what is the cost-benefit analysis of it on me? Not necessarily in terms of money. So that's the thing. The service I'm rendering to you for free, even if it won't benefit me, can you hold it in trust to benefit somebody else? So you see, and, 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 and there's also a ricochet effect of the concept of free again. Now I'm throwing myself out to Loretta. I'm throwing myself out to Nan Chang. So when people come to meet Nan Chang and Loretta and tell them that, look, you know, I need a sense of direction. Do you know what they will say? They will say because there was a Mr. Fola that poured himself out to me. Nothing stops me from pouring myself out to them. And the honest truth is this, um, 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 Vikram, this might be the only opportunity we have to change the world. Because you see, there's so much strife, there's so much, so, so many senseless, needless killings, so many disagreements, so many countries going to conflict and war. So what if mediation is providing an opportunity for us to make a change? For us to make an impact, for us to leave our name in the sands of time, you know, because th- this life is so short, it's so it's so fickle, you know. <clears throat> I, I, heaven forbid, whenever it's time, I don't just want to be a mere statistic. I I, I want to be able to leave a change, and I, I I'm seeing as hours turn into days that the, maybe mediation might probably be the only way I can I can do all of that. So yes, I'm all about the business. And um, yes, I'm also all about making an impact. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, but I, I, let me just point out what Nan Chang said about the fact that let's give it for free, let people use it. All I'm saying, Nan Chang, at that point of time, just tell them you can pay what you want. That's all. Just say that much at least. They will pay you if they find value in it. The moment you say it's free, it will always be, okay, we don't have to pay anything for it. They will pay you. I'm telling you they will pay you when they see the benefit. And if they don't see the benefit, we'll discuss the reasons for that after that. The other thing, I'm letting you people say training. Otherwise, I don't like to use the word training. I say skill development only because these people have the skill. You are honing that skill. You can't put it into them. That training part, I will train you and make you a mediator. That part of it, I still have an issue with. We're having a session on that. So please drop in for that session. So, and of course, like you said, look, there is lots to be done. And the role of mediators in the world, there's lots that has to be done. And that is why the business of mediation is important so that they can earn out of it and then do the larger work for society. You have to do work in Nigeria. You have to, like I was talking about the last session, there is consensus building had to be done policy making happens there you are sitting in lots of other things that you need to do just beyond just doing the mediation so that part of it is important but now Sola, you have to tell us about developing the market here we've if i mean of dan chang has of course spoken about a lot of things what do you think how do you because the business happens when on both sides you of course have your skill but the other end you have to have a market so in terms of social media or otherwise expanding the market creating that is there anything that you want to tell us yes so now um I, we, I think we have to first of all take some steps backward and um and and ask ourselves this it still also boils down to the area of specialization you see you need to ask yourself well, you cannot be a master of all of, of all things so we start off from the area of specialization. What area of mediation are you looking at? Are you looking at going into construction dispute? And most times, like I said earlier on, I also advise people to tilt towards the area of specialization and interest. So let's assume, I'll just pick up a random one. Let's say it's property. So let's assume you've decided to, be, to go to, to mediate in property and real estate. So the first question you ask yourself is that in this particular area, who are the major players there? 
No, no, sorry, I'll take that back. What are the major issues they have there? Highlight them what the pain points are. Now, once you've been able to highlight what the pain points are, the second thing, and, and I must also add that you see what I'm saying to you is a one-size-fits-all. It might not necessarily be property, it might be medical, it might be construction, anything. It's a one-size-fits-all. So you highlight the pain points, you look for who the major players are. When you now look for who the major players are, the second thing you also have to do now is to look at the dissemination of information as far as that as far as the problems they are and what mediation will use to solve i can tell you for free that um, when i started off my um, mediation practice in terms of such um, 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 dissemination of, of of information the bulk of the of the contacts you will get that my result in conversion will come from LinkedIn, not Instagram. So there's so much going on on Instagram and Facebook that it's, it's, it's a very distracted environment for the business and practice of, of mediation. Yes, you can have your tentacles in there, but the, 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 but, but the conversion, the value, the visibility, everything you will get as far as being known is on LinkedIn. Because you see, LinkedIn, because of the way LinkedIn is structured, it, 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 there's this structure around LinkedIn, there's this seriousness around LinkedIn, which is also seriousness around mediation, that you tend to find a lot of mediators that are on, on LinkedIn and are not even on, on, on Instagram and all of that. So as far as trying to gain visibility for yourself is concerned, I'll definitely say go on LinkedIn. Now, there's another thing I'm also going to talk about. There are three ways of gaining traffic. You can gain traffic organically organically is when you try to to build it either through instagram through facebook through sponsored ads and all of that then you also have what is called paid paid um, paid traffic that is when you do sponsored ads and <clears throat> you see because we're in a, a, in a distracted world you also have to be very cautious of the fact that people don't like to read so 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 within the framework of where you're trying to go into always try and keep your information um, 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 short and succinct and direct marketing direct marketing family and friends so if my friend family and friends can patronize me how else do I expect every other person to patronize me and then people should also understand that you need to give yourself time because I've been doing this for the past seven years I started disseminating information on the business and practice of mediation I started in 2015 I remember August 25, 2015, and I've been posting every day for the past seven years. I've never missed a day. Monday to Friday, I've been posting. So people need to understand that, look, you just don't start um, 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 disseminating information on mediation, trying to gain visibility, and you are erratic. Nobody, com nobody, nobody becomes good by what they do occasionally. People become good by what they do consistently. Because you see, as you do something over and over and over again, you not only gain mastery, you also understand certain things that work. And last but not least in answering your question is that you also have to give yourself time to grow. You see, um, no matter what you do, a pregnancy would always take maybe nine months. That's the standard tenure. Whatever you do when you plant a seed, once you've been able to put water, put the manure and all of that, give that seed time to grow. Give that seed time to go, which is why in anything and everything that you do, always have a trajectory. Have a trajectory and don't stop. Don't stop. But the foundation of everything, Vikram, is to at least look for an area of specialization. Don't be a master of all. It's just find an area, focus on that area, be a master in that area, hone that area. Vikram, I can't compete with someone like yourself. You know, so I would rather than compete with someone like Vikram, what do I do? I collaborate with someone like Vikram because you see, collaboration is the new name of the game. So, whatever Vikram is doing, I find something else I'm doing and then I synergize with Vikram. So, that way, there's no competition. You see, the, the idea of competition uh, for me, I think, is counterproductive. Why do I need to compete with you when I can also, when, when I can afford to collaborate with you? And then people also need to read. You see, you see, we're talking about the business of something. And you see, the, 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 the business of, you see, what you render, you, you are in the service business. By service business, what that means is that you can't see mediation. Mediation is not like this. 
So there's a level of abstraction ascribed to what you do. So what that means is that if an iPhone wants to become, if an iPhone is going to, if an iPhone wants to charge more, <coughs> what they will do is that they will come up with a better version of what they have. But it's not like the service business. The only way you can become better is when you inc increase and improve capacity. So you always have to read. I'm out. I'm on the phone. You always have to read. You always have to. How do I say this? You always have to update the iOS of your head. I'm on the phone. Go outside. Yeah, you also have to update the I, I, the iOS of, of of what you have up there. And with this and God on your side, the sky will be the limit. Right. Oh, good. That's the that's the motivation people need. Now, only thing, other thing that we have to also tell people is that there is lots that can be done. Of course dispute resolution people understand that it is something in court or going to court i am saying that expand to the extent of even when contract drafting is happen happening let's have a person sitting there an independent imp impartial person sitting there and that can also be work for mediators so i think we have to expand that part loretta please your thoughts Sorry, I, I got distracted. Oh my God, Loretta distracted. <laughs> <is it? laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, Kiki is somewhere around here, so I was trying okay, to... Can we ask Kiki? I think we have to get Kiki into the, into the conversation. <laughs> that is what hasn't happened. She's going to tell us more about how do you resolve disputes. <laughs> maybe in a couple of years. Maybe in a couple of, of years. Course. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so what, yeah, so what can be done, Loretta, is just kind of a closing kind of thing that you want to do. Final word we well, give to Paula, but um, yeah. yeah. Yes, um, just we talk about visibility. Um, Mr. Fuller already spoke about that. So I know for sure that what people see every day, you know, um, stick somewhere around the brain, even if they forget. Anytime they know that, oh, they need services of a mediator or something, they will always remember you. You can keep posting on social media, even if you don't have uh, the likes and comments, just know that people are seeing what you are doing there. Um, actually working on one project now, because most times when I tell people about mediation, they don't know what it is. They don't know what it means. They ask you if it is meditation. So now I'll, I'll tell them, no, we are not meditating. We are mediating. So for you to explain this to them, you just give them a simple scenario or you just paint this. You know, I always refer them to one particular video on um, YouTube that Mr. Pola made with uh, Miss Abby, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, where we had this mediation session online. It was aired that day. So. Most times I refer them there to just, you know, have an idea of what it means. But I try to explain to them. So we as mediators should be patient enough to also explain to even our lawyer friends. I have a part, uh, Nachan, if you remember on my birthday when we were talking about mediation, there was a particular person that said, she, a lawyer, I don't want to call her name, she says she can never subscribe to anything mediation because and that's where they make their money. You know, I, I, cannot, I cannot allow my clients to uh, go to a mediation when I can go to court and earn money. So you should talk to even your friends. They don't know what it means. So you explain to them and you show them um, examples. So videos are very useful. Like what you are doing right now, Mr. Vikram, is so helpful. Anytime I have... Um, um, any, um, should I say confusion? I just go to your YouTube page. I go to Fortifa Mediation Academy. I just listen to the seasoned mediators that were interviewed. Um, we had senior mediators from Fumi Robert. Every, there were so many of them. These are experienced people who have, you know, practiced law over the years and have also practiced mediation. So listening to them gives you an idea of the pitfalls to avoid or the things you need to do. Sometimes we know exactly what we need to do, but we just need someone to like tell, let us know that, oh, we are not doing the wrong thing. Mr. Fola did that last week. And I'm very grateful because he actually gave me this idea I'm talking about right now, just to make a video to explain to people that, oh, 
this is what mediation is about. And then maybe make a short movie that people can watch and relate to it. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you, Loretta, for coming. I think Fola doesn't have too much time. So I think Fola can just, whatever closing, I mean, he'll continue these discussions, definitely. But if you just want to, a closing. Okay. Guy. Okay, yeah, I just want to, um, um, first of all, thank you for what you're doing, Vikram, because um, um, through this um, session, we are, you are able to disseminate information on the business and practice of mediation. And um, I also want to also thank you for being you, because you make it, you make it easy. You make it easy. And um, I'm, I'm hoping and praying in the not too distant future, everyone listening to this, Will begin, will begin to see mediation as the future of dispute resolution. I'm hoping that any mediators that watch this will not only see mediation as a practice, but also see mediation as a business. So on that note, Vikram, I would um, say goodbye. Thank you once again. Thank you to Nan Chang. Thank you to Loretta, Isaac, and um, I wish you all a good day. I need thank to get to my daughter's you, birthday. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Around. And you have to wish her from our side. And thank you very Happy much. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday thank to you. her. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Love your okay, passion you. for Shifola. Okay, thank you. you Goodbye. You yeah, bye, bye. Okay, bye. So I think, Nanchang, you have your little closing part of it that you want to. You obviously told us quite a bit. But just as a closing <laughs> remark and how, whatever. Your wish. Okay. Well, um... Thank you once again, Mr. Vikram, for this opportunity. Uh, I just want to um, um, uh, add to what Loretta has said. You know, in, in the business of mediation, uh, you need visibility. And um, like Fola will say, uh, LinkedIn is one of the uh, professional uh, social media platform that one can explore. So uh, you, you, you need to have uh, uh, a LinkedIn account and then post relevant things uh, that relates to what you do uh, as a mediator. And then more importantly, I think um, there is need for you to have a mentor. You, you need someone who you can reach out to, to give you guidance, to give you information, to give you direction. Because if you just uh, retain, you acquire the certifications, you are certified, you are trained, and some of those things, and then you do not have someone who will give you guidance. Sometimes you feel discouraged. Sometimes you feel tired of the whole thing. Sometimes in the process of waiting, just as we learned that it takes time, you need to give it time. In the process of giving time, you may get worn out. You, you may be exhausted. You may feel, ah, how, how long will I stay on this thing before it begins to produce something? You know, so, but when you talk to people who have gone through it, they will give you their experience and encourage you. So, or just push it harder. So, push it uh, further, do this or do that. But if you don't have anybody to talk to and you are exhausted and you are tired, you feel like giving up, you can just give up at a point. Loretta mentioned something that at the point she was backsliding from the mediation uh, uh, thing. But, you know, uh, Mr. Fola noticed it and he encouraged her, he gave her direction and suggestions. So you actually need a mentor in that area you want to practice, someone you can easily reach out to to give you guidance. I think that is what I would say in this regard. Perfect. Thank you very much. Now we have Silas, Gabriel, and Kofi on YouTube and the same. Insightful, good job, brilliant. What I'll do is, of course, I hope all of you have subscribed to the channel so you'll get to know when I go live on other sessions. But Kofi has a question which I'll ask Loretta to answer. On the business side of it, how do you get people to settle issues through mediation rather than the conventional courts, litigation and arbitration? Yes, Loretta, what do you want to say? Yes, Loretta, you want to? Loretta is a little distracted there, like always. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. So you said uh, on the, the question. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the. Sorry. I'll tell you the question again. Okay. On the business side of it, how do you get people to settle issues through mediation rather than the conventional courts, litigation, and arbitration? Okay. Okay. So um, 
I'll, I'll say like our boss always says it, don't come with it and make it known like it's a business. Be, be very deliberate about the people you are trying to help them resolve disputes, okay? Understand um, what it's about and don't be about the money, money. Don't mention the money first because people who resolve disputes will always pay for value. They let them have value for the money they are paying. So if you find yourself in that kind of situation when you talk about um, the business aspects, rather than going to court. You try to explain to them because not everybody will want to uh, delay in court. You just let them know. You, you make them understand that they are going to be in control. You explain everything to them, you know. And there are there are little ways, like we, we have some skills. We call it um, um, mediation style. So people have different styles of mediation. When they come into a mediation session, they kind of like use uh, emotional intelligence to know the parties they are dealing with. So looking at them, you already know what to do. You know the kind of advice to give to them. So they are looking at it and they are trying to see if that will actually work. If they see that um, you are not telling them uh, something that we help them, they can just, you know, um, tell you, no, I'm going to court. So you as a mediator, you have to prepare very well. You have to be ready for those kind of things because you are not just coming to somebody to say, oh, come and give me money. I'm going to help you resolve this, this dispute or let's just go to court. No, you are explaining to them that I, I understand what you are going through or I have an idea. I may not really understand, but I have an idea of the dispute you have right now. I just need some of your time, just listen to me. Let's have a conversation with the other party uh, in this dispute and see how we can resolve it. If you're able to resolve it, that's fine. But if you're not able to resolve it, then you can actually talk about the court. So I think that we as mediators, we have a long way to go um, doing that job, trying to talk to our clients to understand that even in this um, business and as business people, it's very important because if I'm a business person and I, I have a conflict with person and they take me to court. I think there is um, a kind of uh, bad blood that will be surrounding us. Our friendship may not be as genuine again. Someone will just be scared because they don't want to have any business with anybody who has taken them to court. But when you talk about mediation, if we go through mediation, it means we value this business relationship and we are ready to you know go on with the business even after having this conflict. We may not be very close friends, but we have been able to identify the areas where we don't understand ourselves. And I think it's um, very important. So I advise business people not to go to court, especially when they are going to have um, a business relationship again, you know. So it's better you resolve it, understand your lapses, resolve that out of court and continue with your business relationship. Because if you go to court, you may never be friends again. So my, my points of view, uh, I, my stand and, you know, my understanding right now is better for business people to go through mediation rather than litigation. Nanchang. Nanchang is, yes, Nanchang, you want to answer something there? Well, um, the, the question is, how do you get people into mediation, isn't it? Totally. If that's your understanding the question, that's the question. <laughs> <It's> you, you <laughs> <know>. <laughs> the business of mediation, basically. Well, business of mediation. Got, uh, no, no, Anchang is picked up. Well. That's exactly what you have to talk about. That's it. Yes, that is it. So, um, you know, it can start, if you are a lawyer, it can start right there in your office. Lawyers are, are actually... Uh, in the in the forefront, or uh, they are like gatekeepers in the dispute resolution environment. So when people have issues or problem, they look for lawyers. So when they come to you, and then you are trained in mediation, you are trained in ADR, you know that people can resolve their dispute through this way. You know how to get them to the mediation is to talk to them about mediation. 
explain to them what mediation is, how mediation is being conducted, and the advantages they are going to gain from mediation. Loretta mentioned some part of it. You know, in Nigeria, once you take someone to court, you have created a permanent and uh, uh, you have you have you have you've gotten a permanent enemy. You feel oh, so I thought this person is responsible. This person is a, a nice person, but you just see they are taking me to court. So let us face it, you know. So, but when you explain to people, even though they don't know anything about it, they tell you tell them that this will afford them an opportunity to actually sit down with someone who will guide them and facilitate. They are going to express their minds. They are going to tell uh, about their grievance and actually the dispute at hand, their own version. And they get to hear the other person explain his own perspective uh, and what is actually troubling him. And when you actually look at it critically, you discover that the two people want two different things and it can actually be sorted at the moment. So, but when you go to court, because of the procedures that are there and you have to follow, you don't even have opportunity to express your mind the way you want to. Your lawyer listens to you and couch it in the language that the court will understand. You go there, you are not given opportunity to explain except when you are cross-examined. And cross-examination can be somehow offensive. The lawyer wants you to go off or maybe say something he wants. And if that happens, you know that you won't have that opportunity. So if you are able to explain to parties as lawyers that this is the procedure, by the way, you need to charge your fee before you begin all these explanations. Because at the end of it, if they succeed, they will feel that you didn't do anything. So charge your fees, collect your money, and then give them direction as to how they are going to resolve it. So if you are explaining to them, they understand the advantage, even though they don't actually believe it that much, but you are there to guide them and you lead them through the process and they see it succeed eventually. I think they will even explain more to their friends. They are going to advertise it more to other persons. So one way to get people to the mediation is actually to explain to them. If you are a lawyer and you have clients that comes to you and, um, Another thing is that as lawyers, one of the rules of our, uh, the rules of our professional conduct uh, mandate lawyers to actually brings the, uh, bring to the attention of their clients the possibility of exploring alternative dispute resolution in resolving their matters. So it's one of your professional responsibility if you are a lawyer. So before you, as you, you begin to file matters in court, the, 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 the rules of professional conduct expects you as a lawyer to actually let the client know that there is another way of resolving this matter out of court. And you must make attempt to uh, actually explore that way of resolving a uh, matter out of court before you go to the court. So if you make that as a practice and you are doing a standard practice as a lawyer, Mediation will be the first point of call. Negotiation, mediation will be the first point of call to get people into it. So, but if they are not your clients, or maybe you are not a lawyer, and then uh, uh, you have this information at your fingertips, you have brothers, sisters who have issues. Some of them are not even comfortable with uh, going to the police or going to the court. So you have an opportunity to be able to explain to them, actually there is a way out of this thing that you don't need to go to court or go to the police. You can resolve this matter. So you talk to them about it and give them guidance. And then you will know where you can direct them to. Oh, go to the multi-door courthouse or go and meet uh, Loretta or meet Fola or meet Nanchang. He is here and here. He will guide you through it. So you can have information at your fingertips that you can disseminate. Even though you are not a mediator or you are not into dispute resolution, you can actually direct somebody to where he can find adequate help. I think that is what I can say about the question. Perfect. Thank you very much. So at this stage, I'll have I'll close this session and we'll have more discussions on this definitely as we go along. So thank you very much, Nancha, Loretta, for coming in. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much, Mr. Vikram. Thank you. Loretta, I can, I, with Loretta, I can say it's always a pleasure seeing you, Nanchang. 
of course yeah. 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 i haven't seen you so long so but <laughs> it has been a pleasure speak, speaking to you kiki yesterday yeah. Yeah. hi kiki thank you hello kiki hello <laughs> yes okay so loretta i drop a message on your uh, linkedin send okay. me a message okay no problem no problem okay, so thank let you let me just cut, cut the live stream here because